What's up guys, Spinfirearms here, and I actually thought this would be a great video to make for you guys, um, just for everybody in general, because right now the world is about hype, elitism, uh, having the best of the best, and stuff like that, and I just want to make it known that you, everyday carry shouldn't be about that. It's very simple how to everyday carry, very easy to do, and so on, and we're going to get into it. And this is just my opinion, so you know you can take it or leave it. It is what it is. But let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. Hit the like button and subscribe, guys. It means a lot to me. That's a free way of helping out the channel. It's basically a free donation to the channel if you do stuff like that. Especially right now, my channel is a little bit shadow banned, and I can see that in the analytics and stuff like that. And I also know a lot of other channels are as well, so that I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, everyday carry. Nowadays, what they talk about is, you know, you need the most capacity, right? Everyone needs a red dot. You should have a compensator. I mean, everyday carry has sort of lost touch with reality, and I feel like that's because a lot of marketing dollars, and obviously, when it comes down to it, firearms are a business, so people are trying to make money off these things, and so on. But I sort of feel like they lose, you know, touch with reality and the average American, especially with the way prices are right now. Gas prices just went up 40 cents in one day where I live. I mean, it's absolutely insane. So I feel like a lot of these companies are forgetting what the average American actually needs versus what they should want, right? And here's how we're going to go about this, right? For instance, if you have one firearm, that is plenty. You could literally defend your life at home, um, wherever you go, and so on. It's all about how you do it, how you take care of your firearms, and taking care of them. So this is basically how you everyday carry with the very minimal amount of stuff, right? If you have one firearm, the number one recommendation I tell people is one, you gotta test it. Not only do you test ball ammo, but put a couple boxes. Spend the extra $40, $60 to throw two boxes of the everyday carry ammo through your firearm right from the beginning, right? And then after that, you don't have to go to the range every single weekend. If you can afford it, that's great. But you need to get out to the range at least once a month. And let's say you do have other firearms like Glock 45, larger firearms, but you don't carry it. You need to make sure your focus at the range is on your carry firearm. You need to make sure you're practicing your draws and so on. Also, a big part of everyday carry is not even going to the range. And what do I mean by that? You can sit in your basement with a pack of snap caps or no snap caps if needed or the dry fire mag and you can sit there and practice your draws over and over again. I try and do it about a minute a day, very easy. Before I get in the shower, I get my firearm and I draw for a minute in the mirror. Very simple, very easy. Yeah, it may sound corny, your wife may say, what the heck are you doing down there? Say, don't worry about it, I'm practicing. And that's how you get better at drawing and stuff like that and that's how you feel really confident with your firearm. Because the main thing is, a firearm like this, which for the haters I have to say, I converted it to 357 SIG because this firearm's in every video. Um, so I just want to let you know, once again, I did convert it because people always get on me about talking about that. But this is 7 plus 1. But if you get really good with this firearm and take self-defense classes and training courses, you're going to be fine. If you take defensive pistol classes and so on, you work on mag reloads, you'll be just fine. So first off is just having a reliable firearm that you've tested, that you've vetted, that you ran your self-defense ammo through, and made sure that it's something that will go bang when you need it to. Number two is finding a good overall holster, right? You need to find a holster that you like and that fits your way of carry. So that's why I prefer somebody getting multiple holsters. Hold on, one is in my appendix. Yes, I was just carrying my SIG, or I mean my uh, 357 SIG shield. Get some holster options. Make your life easier, right? Right here, for fall and winter and stuff, I have the ability to carry concealed still, but three o'clock, right, which is more comfortable. If you can be more comfortable and so on, that's the way to go. And also, you're not giving away. No one knows that you have it on you. Still concealed, but you are no more comfortable. So I do tend to carry 3 o'clock a lot during the winter. So that's one holster. During the summer, it has to be appendix. It has to be in the most concealable spot. So if I'm not pocket carrying, it has to be appendix. So I got something like this. Also, I can still carry this with a belt, gym shorts, sweatpants, bathing suits, literally anything. These discrete carry clips, the doubles. They work amazing. Also with the claw, it, this firearm really sits really well on your body. Very easy to conceal. And also you can use this for your shield plus, your other shields and so on. But this is one of the most versatile firearms or firearm holsters. So if you get a holster like this, you can basically carry every way in every kind of pants. And that's huge for everyday carry in my opinion because it makes your life easier. You're not trying to say, oh, I can't carry because I'm wearing this. And for certain situations, like work, where I can't carry like that because it's super uncomfortable, pocket carry. 
I just slip it into my pocket. The second I leave work, I throw this right into my Blacksmith Tactical V2 holster, put it in appendix, and I'm good to go. The second I get out, throw it into my pocket holster, and boom. It is what it is. You, I carry how I live. I don't live how I carry. I don't let what the activity I'm doing, the place I'm going, the kind of clothes I have to wear, stuff like that, dictate how I carry. I carry based off how I'm going to live. And so having holster options is huge. Number three, maintaining your firearm. Now, especially if you pocket carry a lot, you have to maintain your firearm more. You have to clean it. You got to put um, more love into it, right? You got to take it down more often, take it apart, and really inspect it. A big thing with pocket carry is making sure that all your parts aren't gunked up because the more gunk in there, the more rubbing, the more bending, that whole sort of thing. And over time, that could lead to some issues. So just making sure your firearm is up to date with cleaning and maintenance, but also really learning your firearm. Learn the ins and outs of the internals. If you have one or two firearms, really get into it. Watch YouTube tutorial videos. We're not all pros right away. So look into this stuff, read into it, take it down, put it together a couple times, get really good with it. So if anything ever went wrong, you can take care of it, fix it, put it back together. Also, you can always order spare parts for it. Just have them sitting around. I could swap out 10 different Glock internals right now, just based off the parts kits I have laying around the house. Absolutely love that. So get really into your firearm, really learn it. And actually my MMP is starting to get a little wear from pocket carry, which you can see up front and practicing drawing and stuff like that. The barrels actually held up really nice. Um, I'm actually really surprised, but it is getting somewhere on the slide, but that's the point. These are tools. They're meant to go with you everywhere. They're meant to get beat up. They're meant to go through what you go through. If you're going through a hard day at work where you're sweating and getting dirty, so is your pistol. If you're going through a light day, you're just lounging on the chaise lounge, so is your pistol. It's not, it's just sitting there, right? So you got to take care of your firearm based off how you live and stuff like that. That is one of the most important things that people take for granted. The other thing is having magazines right you don't need 10 magazines 100 magazines you need at least one right so if you're trying to stay on the budget and just have your one firearm your main firearm most of them come with a second mag so maybe you buy a third or fourth that's all fine but in reality if you have two mags a reliable firearm some holster options and take care of your firearm you're good to go you don't need to get a red dot on a carry firearm because first of all nobody in a self-defense encounter or i'll say such a tiny percentage have the ability to extend right because chances are they're up close and personal they're right on you you have a semi-auto striker fired pistol that if they throw out a battery from being so close is not going to work so chances are you are never going to get fully extended and using that red dot you're going to be shooting from the hip from the chest from the armpit chicken wing in it you're going to be shooting from the draw immediately without using your sights. so red dots you don't need them on a carry firearm another thing i would say is a light for me i don't go out at night but if I did, I would definitely have a light on this thing. And if I have to go out at night, that's when I grab stuff like my Hellcat that's already ready and geared up to go for light. But during the day, when it's light out, I am not carrying a firearm with a light. It just is what it is because I don't need it. It's unnecessary during the daytime. Or you can just carry an extra mini flashlight in your pocket and you should be good to go for almost any situation. Um, you don't really even need night sights at all, although I do recommend them. I put them on all my firearms. But also... A way to cover to carry your backup mag right when I'm working because it gets so dirty I carry with ammo armor now the one thing I would say I would like is if they had a clip or something on there so when you just went to grab that mag it ripped the sleeve off that was protecting it and that mag is just ready but mainly what you're gonna use mags for is if your firearm jams up if you have a bad malfunction but chances are if you're in a self-defense encounter and your firearm jams up you know it is what it is at that point but always having a backup mag is nice and something like this, so easy, just slip in your pocket and you're good to go, um, especially if it's dirty. Or just get a magazine holster, an extra one that goes in your pocket or it sits in your appendix on the other side and you're ready to go. So my point being said with that video is you don't need all this. You don't need to feel overwhelmed getting into concealed carry. You don't need to feel like anything is lesser than someone else's stuff. Because I promise you, this XDM right here, I could run for 10, 20 years, not have a single issue. This thing would just run flawlessly. I can use it for home defense, uh, everyday carry. It's just going to run. So if you have a good, reliable firearm that's $600, $400, $300 even for the shields, you're good to go. Just take care of your firearms. I put more faith in my training than I do anything else, right? I can have all the capacity in the world. But if I'm not good with my firearm, what does that do for me? I can put, you know, I can have the best firearm in the world, right? I can have a $6,000 custom firearm, right? Custom 2011 best trigger and everything.
But if I'm not good, if I'm not trained, if I'm not prepared, if I don't have situational awareness, if I don't practice drawing, then then what really am I? There's a lot of free ways out there to get better with your firearm. There's a lot of ways to sit at home that are basically free. There may be a little, you know, for snap caps, you may have a little price or extra mags so you can swap that out. But that's very small when it comes down to being able to defend yourself and protect yourself, spending that little bit of extra money. But I get it. Things are tight right now. The average American spends an extra $800 a month just to survive. Therefore, a lot of range time and ammo and stuff like that is you know gone for a lot of people and i've proven that by having people put it in the comments and some people say they barely even go to the range because it's just ridiculous how expensive everything is so i get it but those are this is my guide to everyday carry i try to keep things simple over here i try not to overwhelm people like saying oh you need to go buy something and then spend all this extra money to get this set up you don't in reality you don't need that you literally can just have a stock cz and be and be good like literally this is all you need comes with the backup mag you're good to go i mean it's just you don't have to make it into this crazy thing it, it really is just and chances are you'll never go through it hopefully we never have to go through self-defense but also 82 percent of all self-defense encounter not a single round of shot you just have to mention you have a firearm on you or show it the other 18 percent rounds have been let go but majority of those times they're up close and personal so really training getting a good feel of how to place your firearm close to your body while shooting from the hip, the chest, stuff like that, so that that slide doesn't hit you and go out of battery or malfunction. Um, so yeah, I put my faith in my training and in the reliability of my firearms. Other than that, it's all a system on how you carry. So if you guys like this video, want to see more, subscribe, hit the like button, put a comment down below. It all helps. Um, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching.